Now we're going to talk about inflammation and essentially that's really the, the sort of crux in terms of immunopathology or even in terms of, of proper response to, of the immune system is this inflammation piece. But before we go into, let's say for example, fighting a pathogen, it's important to recognize that you have a link between your normal coagulation pathway in terms of your vessel coagulation pathway and your inflammatory pathway. Let's look at that first. So if you remember from biochemistry, when you had an intrinsic and an extrinsic coagulation pathway with all of your uh, various vasoactive components. And if you remember factor 12 is part of the intrinsic pathway. And that's also called Hegeman factor is the eponym for it. But what happens is you have in the body some kind of vessel damage for whatever reason and they don't really totally understand it, or at least I don't understand it, is factor 12 in the presence of caninogen, all right, due to vessel damage, essentially creates this active component of factor 12A, all right? And factor 12A then splits pre-calicrine into calicrine. I think of calicrine is probably not even correct, um, but this crazy Irish guy, I don't even know if calicrine is an Irish name, I'm half Irish, but the point is is that calicrine then goes a little crazy and is, is creating a lot of different very vasoactive components in terms of the body. So what does calicrine do? First thing it does is or one of the things anyway, is it splits C5 into C5A. Remember C5A is an anaphylatoxin that was activated through the complement pathway, right? Not only alternative complement, but also classical complement. And it was also a chemotactic for neutrophils. So straight away, we can see that it's going to attract neutrophils to the fight. And remember, this activates the mast cells, okay, to secrete histamine, all right? So remember that we've got, sorry, histamine is the byproduct of this C5A. Histamine is going to increase that postvenial permeability. So now that you can get, again, more uh, cells into the fight, into the tissue from the vessels. So that's one thing that calicrine does. The other thing that it does is it activates neutrophils. And then it also splits caninogen from up here. It's sort of a, you know, a, a self-perpetuating system here into caninogen active form as well as bradykinin. Now we know bradykinin does a couple of things. It's vasoactive and it's also in terms of vessel permeability and it also is going to be a pain mediator. So you can see straight away that even just vessel damage is going to start a cascade of immune cells congregating into the tissues and into the fight. Now the other aspect to set up inflammation, okay, so that was one, one aspect with regard, with regard to, uh, to the coagulation, the intrinsic pathway from vessel damage, but there's another pathway, of course our little friends, for example, our macrophages, dendritic cells, our immune cells, uh, and, uh, is that Remember we talked about the macrophage, okay, encounters a pathogen with this pathogen recognition receptor. He processes that antigen and he becomes activated. And remember how we just went through all these cytokines with regard to T cells, all right? Well, you also have a bunch of cytokines with regard to your macrophages. You could make this a dendritic cell if you wanted to as well. And so what are those? That's going to be IL-1, okay, IL-6. You're going to also have IL-12, IL-15, IL-18, all right? Now, IL-1 IL is going to increase fever. It's also going to turn on a number of different, a uh, number of different drugs, a number of different uh, genes, something like 3,000, between TNF, which we talked about before, and IL-1, those are probably the two most powerful in terms of getting, uh, getting your immune cells worked up in terms of this cytokine uh, milieu, if you will. Now, IL-6, 
what does that do? That's going to increase the expression of C-reactive protein, which we're just keep that in the back of your mind. IL-12, we talked about in 15 and 18, how that's going to activate the NK cells to then secrete interferon gamma, which is then going to produce Th1 uh, type cytokines, which is going to produce TNF and going to start this process. So again, it's it's circular and it's self-perpetuating. So that's who these guys are secreting or what cytokines they're secreting. Now, let's just carve out a piece of this, okay? Let's carve out a piece of this and talk about how this inflammatory process works. So let's carve out IL-6, okay? So keep that IL-6 in the back of your mind. And then also, in addition, to IL-6. The other thing that the macrophages will secrete is they secrete IL-8, which is a chemotractant, you know, like the breadcrumbs for neutrophils, okay? And then it also is going to uh, secrete MCP-1, which is a monocyte chemotactant. You got monocytes in the blood that eventually become macrophages when they get into the tissue. And so this is also going to be secreted by these macrophages or dendritic cells that encounter pathogen out there uh, on the streets of the body. Okay, so what happens? Remember, you've got cells in the blood, but you want to get them to the fight, to the tissue. They're driving around their cop cars. You want them to get into the buildings to get the bad guys, okay, or to eliminate the pathogens. Or if you have necrosis, uh, danger associated molecular patterns, you want those neutrophils to get in there and to clean up the mass so that you can go on to, to heal either by fibrosis or some other way, okay? So this is what happens is you have a vessel, so this would be your blood, okay? And you have these mediaries inside of here which essentially enable the cells first to adhese, okay? So adhesion molecules, adhesion molecules. And then essentially, it, as part of this, you have rolling, firm adhesion, and then you have diapodesis, okay? So you've got your cells. This is the damaged tissue, say, for example. You have your cells coming by here. So what happens is the, the chemical mediators that enable these immune cells to stick, first you have P-selectin, okay? Bear with me on this. P-selectin is in the endothelium. All right. Now, P-selectin, I think uh, the way it was ex expressed to me by someone who, who uh, was teaching a review group is that it's prepped. It's there, ready to go. And guess what it needs? It needs histamine to become active, okay? And we got histamine because we had the C5A that activated the mast cells, right? So that's where we got the histamine. So straight away, P-selectin gets translocated to a surface where one of your immune cells, like you know your neutrophils or your macrophages, can then roll to that. So they're flying by, now they're just gonna sort of roll, all right? Then you have E-selectin. And again, that's another adhesion type molecule, okay, for rolling, I should say, rolling molecule. And what E-selectin is going to do is that's going to be increased by the expression of IL-6. All right, so IL-6, where did you get that? You got the IL-6 from the macrophage, and you could have also gotten IL-6 from the Th2 cytokines. But in any case, think of it coming from the macrophage, all right? Then you also have, so these are your rolling, rolling, and then you're going to have, if we could put over here is, you have adhesion, so firm adhesion. And this is going to be your ICAM, or intracellular uh, adhesion molecule, or VCAM. All right, and so these are the things that really stick. Now, the reason why ICAM is so popular is a couple of reasons. Number one is some people have an ICAM deficiency, and then in which case they can't get those immune cells to stick, in which case they can't sort of uh, clear up 
a lot of infections, for example, pyogenic type infections, pus-like infections, or they may have uh, adhesion defects, like oftentimes in a clinical vignette, they might have somebody, a child born and his umbilical cord doesn't fall off because you need those uh, neutrophils to chew up that uh, schmutz and get the umbilical cord off. So that might be an indication that you have an ICAM deficiency. Again, we'll go through this in the next part of the course. But the point is, is that these are your adhesion molecules, and again, they're increased by the expression of this IL-6, all right? And VCAM, uh, I've read where that's more to do with the T cells, and where that's instrumental is where you're talking about a T cell. Uh, for example, they may target this to block VCAM so the T cells can't get to the fight. So an example of that would be in the case of multiple sclerosis. So it's again immunopathology. You have these T cells getting into the central nervous system, causing problems, chewing up your myelin, in which case, or creating an environment where the myelin gets chewed up, I should say, in which case uh, they can do a drug that's potentially going to target that mechanism so that you can prevent the immunopathology. I can. Again, this is uh, talking more or less with regard to neutrophils and monocytes. This one, uh, there is a drug, for example, uh, to prevent reperfusion injuries, all right? Part of the problem, uh, let's say, for example, one drug that they're testing has to do with uh, frostbite. So people with uh, going to Everest or whatever, they get frostbite, and then where the damage really happens is when they get reperfusion and all these reactive oxygen uh, species go in there and chew up the tissue. And so you get a little shot of anti-ICAM that prevents that massive influx and then therefore you don't have a reperfusion injury. So again, remember, there's two components of this whole immune system. One is to fight the bug or to clean up, for example, a mess from necrosis from a stroke or something like that or an injury. And then the other aspect of it is, well, sometimes too much of a good thing is a bad thing. And so we have drugs that target this particular component. Okay, so backing up, we have first thing that happens is C5A, mast cell, histamine, histamine takes P-selectin prepped, you start to roll, E-selectin also comes up, which starts to enable those cells to roll, and then you have firm adhesion with ICAM and VCAM depending on the cells that they're reacting with, and then on top of that, okay, you stuck now you got to diapodese and get into the tissue, and that is done by an interaction of PCAM on the endothelial with PCAM on the uh, particular immune cell. All right, and we'll go through a couple of questions, and that'll make it much more clear for you, for uh, both of us. The one uh, note about PCAM is, or I'm sorry, one note about ICAM is that it can be very confusion, confusing, sorry, who's ICAM? Because you can have ICAM on a T-cell macrophage interaction and antigen presentation. So I always think of the ICAM as the wannabe. He's the one that wants the other cell to stick to him. So in the case of endothelia cells, endothelial cells, ICAM is part of the endothelial cell. So again, these molecules are going to be very important in terms of understanding them because drug targets immunopathology as well as, of course, our beloved tests that we love to take. So let's look at number, uh, or rather, uh, some quiz questions for this. So quiz question number one is, with respect to inflammation, which of the following mediates pain? All right, and the answer there is bradykinin. Remember, we got the bradykinin because the calicrine, right, was active and created a bradykinin. Something I didn't mention is if you want to shut down that whole uh, calicrine process where you got, you know, the C5A or you got the bradykinin, it's that... Uh, that C1 inhibitor. Remember that the C1 inhibitor for a complement, it also inhibits this process. So you can imagine if you have a deficiency in that, you're going to get edema because why? Because histamine is bio vasoactive. It creates this whole uh, situation and also bradykinin is vasoactive. So C1 inhibitor. And I think I have a question on that. Let's go on to number two. Which of the following describes the link between coagulation and complement? And the answer there is uh, number A, which is uh, tissue damage initiates the intrinsic coagulation pathway, remember with 
factor 12 or Hagerman factor, uh, which yields calicrine, which then activates a number of inflammatory mediators. Number three is, what does calicrine do? And the answer is all of the above. D, it activates the neutrophils, it splits complement protein C5 to C5A. Remember, that's just flying around, okay? C5 complement is in your blood, so it's ready there to, uh, to become active. C is it releases bridekinin from caninogen. Number four is, how does C5A perpetuate inflammation? And that's both of those, A and B. It's a chemotactic for neutrophils at the site of infection or trauma, and C5A causes degranulation of the mast cells, i.e. histamine release. And remember, histamine is going to induce P-selectin. And number five, with respect to inflammation, what does histamine do? And the answer there is B and D above. It causes the translocation of P-selectin prep up here uh, from the cytosol to the endothelial cell surface, which results in rolling. And then D, it increases vascular permeability in post-capillary venules. Again, you got to be leaky and permeable in order to get those cells in there. Number six is, what is bradykinin's role in inflammation? And the answer there is A, it increases vascular permeability in post-capillary venules. Now, you and I both know that it also is going to uh, be a pain mediator, but we're talking about inflammation on that. And seven is a true false. Tissue macrophages, phagocytose, antigen, and secrete cytokines, chemokines, matrix, melatello, proteases, and other inflammatory mediators during tissue damage, even in the absence of infection. That's true, okay? Remember that tissue damage has an inflammatory-like response, and that is uh, really, again, where we're, where we're targeting a number of drugs to try to prevent the overreaction of that process. Number eight is, which of the following do tissue macrophages secrete after direct recognition via the uh, pathogen recognition receptors in subsequent phagocytosis, right? Remember, that would be your TLRs, or that might even be your nod-like receptors, and the answer there is all of the above, okay? You're going to get IL-1, IL-6, 12, and TNF, as well as the chemotactants, IL-12 and MCP-1, the matrix metalloproteases, which are going to chew up that type 4 collagen in the basement membrane and tissue inhibitors of that. That's a regulatory component. So all of these things happen. You, you, you will be asked questions on number 8 all the time because they, they want us to understand the mechanism by which these macrophages are attached to the inflammatory process. Number 9 is which of the following results in the expression of E-selectin on endothelia? And that is A, IL-1 and TNF, right? We talked about IL-1 and TNF being secreted. Number 10 is, which of the following enhances the cytotoxicity of macrophages? And that's TNF, right? Remember how uh, TNF was a Th1 cytokine? It's going to increase the cytotoxicity of the macrophages because it's not only going to increase this inflammatory process, but it's also going to feed the fight in terms of the macrophage being able to uh, perpetrate its armamentarium and ADPH oxidase, myeloperoxidase, and all of the uh, various components, INOS, in terms of, in terms of its uh, fight. Number 11 is, which of the following cytokines induce the de novo expression of ICAM-1, VCAM-1, E-selectin, as well as enhance the expression of ICAM-2? And again, that's your friend IL-1 and TNF. If you don't know the answer to something with regard to inflammation, answer IL-1 and TNF, and I guarantee nine times out of ten you're going to be uh, correct. Again, they're um, the favorite in terms of drugs. Uh, targets as well, or at least TNF is. Now, going to um, going to to the last one on D there, TGF beta and IL-10. Remember, those are going to turn down. Well, particularly IL-10 is going to turn down uh, the fight in terms of inflammation. Number twelve is which of the following results in rolling? Now remember, rolling is that first step. Then there's firm adhesion, then there's diapodesis. So rolling is going to be A and B above. P-selectin, which is prepped, it's just translocated with histamine. And E-selectin, which is going to be increased with your, uh, with your IL-6, for example. All right? 
So the answer is E, A and B above. Which of the following in number 13 result in firm adhesion? And those are all of the above. That's your VCAM, ICAM 1 and 2, enhanced, are all of the above. And again, those are, those are where we're looking at the drugs. They haven't quite worked this out. If they had, then we would have a lot less reperfusion injuries. For example, post-myocardial uh, infarction um, is, is why this is such a hot area of research with regard to firm adhesion. Number 14 is, which of the following cytokines induces the secretion of acute phase proteins? All right, the acute phase proteins are going to be your uh, C-reactive protein from the liver, and that's your IL-6. All right, in IL-6, again, it increases ICAM and VCAM and E-selectin, all right, as well. All right, number 15, C-reactive protein induces which of the following on vascular uh, endothelium? And the answer there is E, all of the above. I think we beat that dead horse. Um, number 16, what cytokines do dendritic cells secrete that in turn stimulates the NK cells to secrete interferon gamma, which then results in that t naught going to differentiate into Th1 CD4 positive cells, which those cells then secrete TNF, which then causes this whole, uh, this whole cascade. And we know that cold by this point, which is CIL12, okay, is going to increase the NK cells. Number uh, NK cell secretion of interferon gamma. All right, number 17, almost done. Which of the following results in adhesion for the purpose of transmigration and diapodesis? Okay, so this is being able to get into the tissue, and that answer is E, PCAM. All right, PCAM is uh, expressed on both the cell coming in as well as the endothelium, and that stands for, if you're interested, platelet endothelial cell adhesion molecule. <laughs> Okay, number 18 is, what do lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils express that, that bind VCAM on activated vascular endothelium which results in firm adhesion? So in other words, these are the cells that are flying by. What do they have? We talked ad nauseum about, you know, these guys on the endothelium, but what do the cells that are driving by have on them? And those, uh, that particular marker or uh, cell adhesion molecule is VLA4, which has another name, CD49D29 uh, integrin. And if you're taking uh, some immune classes, they will test you on some of, on all the names. So don't just know one. So VLA4. So again, that's potentially a target for drugs. Number 19. What do lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils express that bind ICAM-1 and ICAM-2? The, the previous question was VCAM on activated vascular endothelium which results in firm adhesion and margination and that is A, LFA-1, uh, uh, CD11A18, CD18 integrin. I, I would say of all the molecules I've seen in terms of the designations on this particular topic, CD18 you will see. You will see that molecule um, mentioned that way, not necessarily LFA1 uh, on, on your board review type questions. Uh, number 20, which of the following are expressed on neutrophils and monocytes that bind ICAM1 on activated vascular endothelium that results in firm adhesion uh, and margination? And the answer there is C. Okay. Again, it seems like a big hassle to memorize this, but again, it, it is absolutely critical and will be tested over and over again. Number 21, which of the following is constitutively expressed on all vascular uh, tissue? So all the time, uh, constitutively expressed, you do have the uh, PCAM. All right, that's B. Number 22, CD4 positive T cells circulate and enter the site of infection and secrete which of the following? All right, so this is going to be all of the above. So the, these CD4 positive T cells, they're going to um, A, TNF, 
right, which is going to activate the macrophage. B interferon gamma, which is going to enhance the macrophage cytotoxicity because remember it upregulates all those reactive uh, species or reactive cap the capability to secrete the reactive species. Number C is interferon gamma enhances NADPH oxidase activity. Remember that's going to give you ultimately uh, your uh, hydrogen peroxide, which is going to combine with chloride and myeloperoxidase and bleach, and bleach is a great killer for bugs, and it also activates INOS. So even if your patient is uh, has no NADPH oxidase and has no myeloperoxidase, if they have, uh, you know, if they can have interferon gamma, which sometimes we give them as a drug, um, they can have INOS, which is also reactive. So the answer there is D, all of the above. And I believe that is it for inflammation. Thank you.